I've been playing Rise of Turner because you have no time to game. Welcome to this next When the Credits Rolled video, a series in which I only create a view once I've seen the credits roll on a game, so you can have a bit of trust in what I'm saying. A little bit of an odd one on this, the credits are actually in the menu, so I don't know what that means, but I got to the end of the game, completed the last mission, and then the game just carries on. But anyway, if you're a tactical strategy, turn-based RPG fan, we're living in somewhat of a renaissance in the last couple of years, with more and more games coming out from both big devs and indie creators. And this big boom means there are lots of games coming out, like the one we're talking about today. But is it a good modern example, or is this one a bit of a miss? It was released on May the 13th in 2021 for PC, PS4, Xbox One and Switch. Developed by Mackie, or McKay, I don't know, Mackie, let's go with that. Um, published by Forever Entertainment. It took me about 10 hours to complete, so not a particularly long one. The story on this one is a bit hit or miss. And it's quite basic. It's about... Nathiel is a scout for a bandit force that is about to raid a village. He stays behind because he's not really very bandity, and they suggest that he usually stays behind and looks after the camp. But after a while, he doesn't hear much going on, and the bandits haven't returned. So he goes to the village to explore, and what he does find is Lua, a young girl that appears to have murdered the entire bandit horde by herself. After some back and forth between the two, they, hold off, they head off on a journey to the capital to find a man Lua only knows the name of and nothing more about him. After collecting a couple more members and meeting this mystery man, the true quest begins. As Lua, having left her village, must now gather her sisters, who are scattered among other villagers, to achieve spoilers. This adventure will pit them against religion, bandit, fo and forces from a few different kingdoms. It's not the most complex plot in history of video games. It took a while for me to get to grips with Lua, especially as a character, as most of them aren't the most likeable, but they are serviceable. They're not so horrible that you don't want to play the game, but they aren't the greatest characters I've ever seen. And they, like I said, they, they help the plot if they're all kind of a little one note. And yeah, that's it. So anyway, on to the gameplay. I always start outside a battle, and in this game it's very simple. Firstly, you have a map screen, with each node being a battle you can fight. Blue highlighted ones are the next story mission, and green ones are old battles you can refight as many times as you want. Next, you have a character screen where you can select up to six fighters that you want to take into battle, and even view the bios if you really want to. You can then select the items that your little dudes are taking. There's quite a few items, and they're pretty much all open from the start of the game. You can pass item rounds at will and everything. Um, I recommend having a couple of healing items and a couple of door and chest keys for everyone. There's also attack items like bombs and items for increased gathering and stuff like that that you can use in battle, but I never use them. Uh, make sure you keep an eye out for the permanent stat buff items as well. I didn't notice them at first because um, there are other stat buffs that are like one turn, but there are permanent stat buff items. And you get quite a lot of them. Uh, next, you can craft items. This is super simple. You have all the recipes from the start and it's literally just select the item you want and if you've got all the required bits collected, you can make the item. Again, focusing on the healing keys and buff item. After this, we have the gems menu. Each character can equip a number of gems you find in battle. These allow you to customize your character a little bit. So if you want them to be hit harder, equip some attack gems. The only advice I have is don't bother with the floor gems as gems come in different flavors. So you have like floor up to like perfect, like perfect ones. Uh, but with the flawed ones, you don't just get a stat buff, you also get a stat decrease in another area. So it's kind of pointless. Whereas the higher grade gems don't have the decrease. They're just a buff. What you can do with the flawed ones though, is you can convert them into crafting materials from that menu. So they do have a use. Just get the word of them and make sure everyone's got a semi-decent selection of gems equipped. Lastly, we have the character progression system, which in this game isn't levels. 
So there's no XP or anything like that acquired from battle. But what you have instead is every participant gains a skill point to spend on their skill tree after each battle they participated in. So the more battles they're in, the more skill points they have. And this skill tree is divided into two main paths, the character skills and generic skills. Just go for the character skills. Work on generic skills once you've finished the character skills. Um, the character skills are specific to that character and are more focused around actually strengthening them. So this is where you'll get your attack buffs, like straight up attack buffs, um, any special skills that they might have, etc. The generic path gives you more gems, slots, and some like basic stat ups and downs depending on health level and stuff like that. And it's, it's, it's really simple. Basically, you can't build a character long as long as you go... Like, you can't build a character wrong as long as you go through their character path. It's a good t time, I suppose, outside of the battle. I know we're talking outside of the battle, but it's a good time to talk about these paths, especially follow the character paths, make some of the characters absolutely broken. <laughs> like, there is a balance issue in this game. And you literally gain characters by the end of the game that can murder their way through the entire game by themselves. I'm not going to spoil who. You're, if you play the game, you'll get it very quickly. And you get a lot of these characters very early on. And, my God, I, I've never seen any any characters murder so many people without having to do very special setups using YouTube guides and things. This was no guides. They just murdered everyone by following the normal path. Take that as you will. <laughs> the battles themselves are pretty simple overall. It's an I go, you go gameplay loop, meaning that everyone on my team goes, then everyone on the enemy team goes. And well, simple is the word of the day here. You select your character, you're given the option to move, attack, wait, or use an item. And for pretty much all the characters, that's it. No spells or anything like that. But there are a couple that have a singular special skill, not a big list of menus like you might have in other games. And that is it. So yeah, simple. Movement is probably the first thing you'll do, and you'll notice straight away that unlike many like tactical RPGs, the movement of these little dudes is massive. In some cases, 10 or more tiles. Like, take this into consideration. Most games' movement is roughly like the four to six tile range. This game, it seems to be like eight to 10 for most of the characters. And then some of them get movement up skills or you can get a stat buff that give item that gives them more movement they match like cavalry and flying units in other games if not outdoing them in many cases so they literally your characters blitz around the map there is no wasted time in movement here <laughs> and on top of this the game doesn't even have terrain effects so no being slowed or suffering debuffs or anything like that for being on certain terrain that you might see in like a fire emblem. No extra defense buffs for being on a, a tile with a wall on it or anything like that. None of that. No status effects from tiles. Apart from the one tile that will stop you dead in your track and that is traps. They come in two types. Blood, like bleeding and poison. And they are a pain in the ass because they could be anywhere you have nothing that tells you visually that this could be a trap tile. They're literally just there. And you don't even gain any skills that can find them that I could see. And I got all the characters. So I don't know if I missed something, but there was no way to tell where a trap was. They're just, you just get hit by them. So you better, they're not, they're not, they're more of an annoyance as well because the bleeding and poison effect don't do that much damage. And because of how overpowered your characters are, it's just this slight annoyance. I only find, because most missions, Lua, if Lua and Nathiel die, then you fail. So I carry the occasional like, condition healing item with them. But I don't really think I needed it. <laughs> and on, so other than that, you have all the, your enemies on the map and you have gathering spots. Gathering spots are for gathering gems or... Uh, crafting materials and they're everywhere some of the chests are locked hence needing the keys and sometimes you come across locked doors hence needing the door keys you also have a master key that can get through either of 
honestly, just gather these as you go. And I found I had enough items to go around. It's no big deal. Most of the missions are either kill the enemy or get across the map. So it's in like from one side to the other. And there's like marked spots. Sometimes you have to kill a boss type, like a boss type character. But these before you can escape, most cases. Uh, but that's it. That's that's your mission types. Kill the enemies or get out. The like I said, you can replay old missions. These are all just kill the enemy. You do gain the skill point for doing the old old missions repeatedly. So if you want to completely break the game, just repeat the first mission over and over and over again, and your first characters will absolutely murder everyone in the game before you even start. I mean, the only missions I retook myself was a couple at the start when I was trying to figure out the game mechanics and then there are some hidden characters that you can only unlock by doing old missions again once you've hit certain points and there's three of these so that was it you know, I didn't really feel like I needed to redo lots of missions to power my characters up because they were bent anyway but anyway what's good about the game well the gameplay itself, I like the massive movement ranges. That felt good and fun. And visuals, like the character sprites I enjoyed. Character portraits are quite good. But yeah, that's about it. On the negatives, which unfortunately feel a bit like they outweigh the positives here, the story is a bit lacklustre. Lure and such are not the greatest characters. It could do with a bit more depth in its gameplay, like like tile effects and more skills to use, would have made it feel a bit better, and maybe a bit more variety in mission type. But yeah, it's a bit bland and lacking, really. So before I give my final thoughts, what do the critics say? Well. Looking at Metacritic, the PC literally has no score. So went to the next one, which was the Switch. No, it's not a direct comparison because I played this on PC. But it's as close as I can get. And the Metacritic score is 54 with a user score of 6.8 or 68. Ooh, so that's, that's a bit down there. And honestly, do I disagree? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think I do. So what are my final thoughts? Well, as I've said, the game is pretty simple. But on a more pleasant note, to not be completely negative, only being 10 hours long, it doesn't overstay its welcome. So you can play through this game and get some enjoyment out of it, and it's not that expensive. So I think I picked it up on sale for like £2. And for that, it's worth it. I mean, 10 hours for that, look, it's all right. But if you paid much more than that, I feel like you'd be feeling a bit left out. It's just a bit lacking, as I've said. The story doesn't really, the story isn't really great. The gameplay is a bit empty. The skill tree is all right, but yeah, overall, I have to give it a rating of for niche fans only. <laughs>